In this video, I will share my process of installing Windows 98 SE on a retro gaming PC. We have an Athlon 64 system, socket 754, with 256 megabytes of RAM, a ATI Radeon 7000, a Sound Blaster Creative Labs Live, a one terabyte SSD, an optical drive, and then you need to go to the WinWorld website, download the ISO of Windows 98 SE, the OEM version, and the license keys are also on that page. To use the SSD, we're using an IDE to SATA adapter. Windows 98 is not able to use one terabyte, so I went into the BIOS and configured the hard drive options to limit the capacity to 7.844 gigabytes. The storage device, you can leave it unpartitioned, boot from the Windows 98 SE boot CD and Windows 98 will automatically partition and format your storage device. If you partition and format it yourself, for example, you want to align the partitions before installing Windows, you can do that. Uh, Windows will just say there's an existing operating system. Just choose the option to replace it. If you're booting into the command line, FDisk is available straight away. But if you're looking for the format utility and other DOS tools like uh, ScanDisk, they are found on the optical drive under the Win98 subdirectory. For this video, I partitioned and formatted the SSD myself. So we're choosing the upgrade option. You will get asked questions about the region, the keyboard layout, username, and so on. And also you get a screen where you can choose which programs do you want. I basically unselect everything and just leave the volume mixer and the CD player for gaming. That's really all you need. If your machine doesn't have a floppy drive, and sometimes it depends also on the BIOS and what options you have selected, like disabling the floppy controller, sometimes the installation can sort of freeze right at the beginning and then later after the second boot. Basically, it's looking for the floppy drive, can't find it, and so it'll try for a little bit. Basically, you just need to wait several minutes and the installation will continue after a while. For gaming, less is more, and you might need these uh, resources, but I don't. So I went into the BIOS and I'm disabling resources such as the integrated audio, the Ethernet port, the serial and parallel ports, and the SATA controller. But of course, that depends a little bit on what you're going to do with the machine. For uh, In my case, for gaming, I don't need any of these resources. And by freeing them up, you can avoid some issues with PCI cards, especially if you want to try MS-DOS. After the Windows setup is finished, we need to install some drivers. There are lots of ways of getting the drivers onto our retro gaming PC. I'll show you two methods. One is using a USB flash drive and the other one is using a CD. To get USB working, we need the USB storage driver. I put a link down below in the video description. I burnt that driver onto a CDRW. That means I can wipe the disk and use it again. Run the installer. It will reboot the machine, then insert your USB drive and you can copy files onto your retro gaming PC. Make sure the USB is formatted uh, as FAT32 and you shouldn't have any issues. Alternatively, you can add all the drivers onto your CD and copy them across. You'll get better performance with the optical drive because uh, without installing the USB 2 drivers, you will get USB 1 performance. So got to be a little bit patient, but luckily the drivers are not that large. The very first drivers I recommend installing are the chipset drivers. I got them from the Gigabyte website. They're still supporting the products. I downloaded the chipset drivers from VIA as well as the USB 2 drivers. The VIA chipset drivers are kind enough to enable DMA mode for storage for both the SSD and for the optical drive. Not all chipset drivers do this, so definitely go into the device manager and make sure that DMA mode is enabled. The USB 2 drivers are next and now copying from a USB flash drive is a lot faster. The next drivers I recommend are the graphics drivers. I got the latest video drivers from the AMD website. After installing them, I set the resolution and the color depth. And you can also have a look in the driver options, maybe enable anisotropic filtering and playing around with the vSync settings, depending on uh, what games you want to play, if you're benchmarking and yeah, depending on what your needs are. 
and we're almost there. We just have the audio drivers left. Uh, you can get them also from our website. Make sure you installing the VXD drivers for Windows 98. In our case, we're using a Sound Blaster Live and the Audio G2 drivers. Um, they just work better with uh, the Sound Blaster Live cards. There are many versions of the Sound Blaster Live and finding the right drivers is difficult. So if you go with the Audio G2 drivers, they will work really well. A bit of tweaking afterwards. I'm uh, increasing the sample rate conversion quality and also go into the mixer settings and mute all the inputs so that the output is nice and quiet. And finally, we need to install DirectX. I'm going with version 7, that's recommended for Windows 98. And after that, everything should be good to go. I have a storage benchmark here, a TTO disk benchmark to show you that the SSD is working really well. And now in the background, uh, 3D Mark, the demonstration showing you that the machine works fine and the audio is also playing just fine. And there you have it guys. I often got asked how do I install Windows 98. There's nothing special to it. Uh, I follow the same sequence of steps basically for all my projects and that has been working fine. Some computer parts, it's a little bit harder to find the chipset drivers. So I have a few tips for you. If you know what the chipset is, that's a good start. You can try to find the chipset drivers directly. On our website, we have a couple of drivers from Intel, for example, as well as from VIA. But another tip I use is go to the ASRock webpage and find a random motherboard that uses the same chipset and their product names usually have the chipset number in there so it's not hard to find uh, a motherboard from Gigabyte, Asus or ASRock with the same chipset and just use their drivers. Um, those chipset drivers they work uh, with, they're not tied to a certain motherboard, they will work with other motherboards and yeah that's a little hack that I use uh, in case the main board doesn't come with a driver. It's the case with Intel for example, they pulled all the retro vintage drivers which I still don't understand and uh, is a real shame. Luckily companies like Gigabyte, Asus and others, uh, AMD for example and Nvidia still have all drivers on the website but you never know it could change any day. So there you go I'm already working on the next video. We had a look at a storage video recently and I got asked about aligning partitions and how to run the trim command. So that's something we will look at, so stay tuned. But yeah, let me know what do you think about uh, my method of installing Windows 98? How do you install Windows 98? Do you have any comments, any improvements, any feedback? Please leave them down below. And that's it. If you found the video interesting, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I shall see you soon in another one.